Okay, so now we're going to model our blade based on these uh, references that we have, just like this and this. Um, I've already froze them, but I'm going to do it again just to be clear. I'm going to freeze all. So right now I can select these because they're frozen or they're unfrozen. But if I want to change it, I can go to, um, I can do freeze all, but by default it makes everything gray. So we're going to go to object properties and tell it to show frozen and gray as way as it's defaulted. We're going to turn that off and say OK and then freeze. And we'll do both. Free selection. This way I don't grab them by accident because we're working in birds. Okay, so then I'm going to come to the top of Z and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a box. If I want, I can turn the grid on. I really only need to make sure that um, it's semi center because we're not going to be done with it. Um, there's several ways you can get this to work correctly or to lay out correctly, but we want to go back to front. And I'm going to make this Alt X so I can see through it. So there you go. And I can see through it into the other object. So what we're going to do, and there's a couple ways we could do this. I just want you to understand that I could come in here and tweak this to where I want it to be just the height I want it to be, like this or something. And then I can say I want it to be just so wide, front D. I can probably also come in here with this and say, zero so i make sure it's centered in the world which obviously our plane should be too um and then i'm going to come in and do the width and pull it back like that much i could totally do this stuff and i can move this up so the bottom of it's right there and i could come up here and do it this way but in class we were talking about a different way to do it so i'm going to go ahead and undo that and just leave it as a piece of crap okay so what I have now is I've changed it to an edible poly. It means I have one to go to verts, two to go to edges, which is just these, and three to go to borders, which we talked about, but we're gonna use in this case, four to go to polygons, and five to go to the whole thing, the whole kit kaboom. So if I look at this object outside of the sub-object mode, you can see there's the pivot point. So probably the best idea is to move this up to the, the correct position. Make sure it's zeroed out because I know that's the center of the edge of this thing. So we'll just do that. Um, but if I had it by chance over here, it's going to make my um, symmetry be weird. So I'm going to move it to the middle. And then I'm going to come to here and I'm going to grab this edge, oops, not move it, and do ring. And once I have that ring set, I'm going to come over to connect and just connect one. And what it does is it cuts it in a third or it cuts it in half like that. And then um, that allows me to give you an idea when I go to verts, I can come up here and do stuff like move this all the way up and I can take these and move it kind of in, um, all that stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm going to grab these and move them in at least the right width. I'm not going to worry about this side because the cool thing is, is that's still the center. So why does that matter? Well, if I come to polygon mode and I grab this edge right here, this poly, the, all the polys, and what I'm grabbing is all of these, okay? If I grab all of those and I delete, I now just have half a sword to work with, right? Well, what we're gonna do is use what's called a symmetry modifier up here, or you can find it in here. Um, symmetry, and I'm gonna tell it to not be on that, but on the X, and then you see it disappears. What it's actually doing is copying itself from this side to this side and since there's nothing here we get nothing so i'm going to do flip and now i've got both sides um, and again this is because the left is the easiest shortcut to get to the left viewport so i'll go to the left and then i can see the left easier in the front okay so why do i do that what's the big deep whoop do you do well that means that when i come back down here if i turn on this little uh, show in result toggle which i think is a beaker or a glass half empty um, it shows me what it's going to look like, but it also gives me the ability to modify these things by myself. Okay, so that's great. So I only have to build half the sword. Well, what if we took it one step further, left this way, and we say we only want to build um, a quarter of the sword. How do we do that? Well, we come back and go to two for edge mode. We're going to grab this edge. Now I've been doing it with the ring like this, so it selects all the way around it. Let me turn off the final, so you can see it selects all the way around it like that. But we can also just go to the, our left mode like this and draw a bounding box, in this case, just a selection box around the center edges like that, just those edges. And then I can do that again and say connect like that. So now I've cut it in half again 
this way. Well, why do I want to do that? Well, because that's the edge of the, the blade. So I'm going to come back to my editable poly. I'm going to grab this edge here. I'm going to grab this edge up here. And I'm going to delete. And now, if I go back up to symmetry and I do Y, which is the backwards and forwards, and I do flip again, I now have a sword that um, is only quarter of it's actually showing, but I'm building four sides to it. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to the front and then I'm going to go back to the editable poly mode and I can leave it on this if I want. If that's easier, sometimes it's easier to see. If you can see it, it gets a little thinner or a little bit harder to see the purple lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to edge mode. I'm going to grab these. So I've got it height right. I've got it based close, but I need to like divide it. So when I model this or change some forms, it's able to do that. So. I'm going to grab all of the side ones, all of the vertical this way, because I want to cut it in this direction. If I wanted to cut it up and down, I would grab these. But since I only want to cut it this way, I'm going to grab those, those side ones. And then I'm going to say uh, connect. And what I can do is I've done connect before, but it's one. And then I can, you know, I could just take that one and move it and move it up and down. And make sure, by the way, when you're moving stuff in the orthographic front view or whatever, that you're grabbing only one direction. You don't want to grab two. Um, but I don't want to do that because I probably want to cut it here and here at least to get it started. So what I'll do is instead of just going connect, I'm going to go over to connect and the options and then I'm going to change this to two and you'll see now it's connected in two different places and I'll say okay. And I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to do it. You can do it with edge mode or you can do it with vert mode. It doesn't matter. Uh, verts are just something the way I think, so I'm going to do verts. I'm going to move this down, and then I'm going to take this one. It looks pretty good. I'm going to move it inward so it matches the height, the depth of this a little bit. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we'll grab this one and go to there. And then we're going to grab this one and go to here. Now, the problem with this blade is that it's only, it's flat all the way in the center, but it's sharp on the edges. So how do we do that? There's a couple ways to do that. but one of the problems with cutting, you know, collapsing these pieces together is that you lose your quads. But that's okay, we'll still do it. I'll show you how it works. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and go to target well. And what that allows me to do is take this vertice, make a dotted line from it, and go to this vertice. So now it's collapsed. There's not two verts anymore, it's just one. And I want to make sure I do it with both. So now I've got two verts there, which means this is a try. So I'm going to go back to the front view, and then I'm going to go to two again, and I'm going to grab this edge, and this time I'm going to go connect again, but I'm going to change it back to one. And then I'm going to say okay. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to grab these verts. Make sure you're grabbing both. That's the reason I drag a box around them, because if I drag, click on one, I'm just going to click on one. So if I do this again, just to be clear, I click here, I'm only clicking one. I really want both of these because if I click one, it's going to be weird for now. Eventually, we're going to grab just one, but for now. And we're going to take this and move it over to here, like that. And then we're going to look at this one. So this has got obviously more of a curve. And like we've talked about before, curves inside of 3D is not really what happens. So what we're going to try is a new tool again inside of the Edible Poly. That's why they're so powerful. And that one is going to be chamfer. And this chamfer is a button that you can click and do a chamfer on, or you can use the modify thing. And again, it's inside of your menu here. And it opens up this thing. And what the chamfer can do is we can tell it to subdivide. Right now, it's only dividing it into two pieces, which is great. But we're going to keep going. And then we're going to add another one and another one. And just to get that curve just the way we like. And what you may notice is that it um, is probably a little bit too sharp, but that's fine. We can do this. Let's cancel this one. And what the biggest problem is, if I look at this, is I come to here and I grab it and go, this probably should be over here more. Now if I come back to here and I do a chamfer, I get something a lot closer. This may not be far enough in. That's the problem with chamfers. It's going to even it out or average it out. So what I'm going to do is take these two edges these two birds, again, I'm grabbing both. That's why I'm dragging the box around up front. And then I'm gonna move this, oops, move this in one direction towards the center. 
and then you go back to two, and I'm gonna add the chamfer, and now you can see that it's a little bit better. It actually moves across that surface better. And then we'll say plus, and in this case, we can actually grab this one and do the same thing. Okay, so we have plus, like that. And it looks like it did something weird, so we're gonna cancel that. And grab this one. I think I missed that one here. There we go. We're gonna pull this back up just to give us a nice from the front view curve on the blade a little bit more. Okay, these are diagonal and stuff, and we'll talk about that in a second, but that's that. Now, what we're gonna do is take a little bit of time and model some stuff out here. We want from the front this to be the flat surface, this to be that flat edge that's on the blade. So we're going to take this vert, which is only the front one, and we're going to move it down just like that. So we'll go to the front again and back up, it's there. Um, I can take this to make it even so it doesn't make my brain itch. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these front ones here, and there's a couple ways you could do it. I'm just going to control and grab them because you'll notice that this distance is the same for all of them. So I'm going to take this, all of them, everyone. That one, yeah, that one too. Okay. And then, in the front view, since I have all those selected and I have this line, all I have to do is move them to that line. It may take a little bit of adjusting here and here. Like that. And if I need to, I can move two at a time because I know they're the right distance because that's the way they were made. I can take two, move this over, and take two, move this over. And there you go. So, Let's take a look at what we have. If we turn this back to this, we can see the solid form. We can see that we've got a blade that has an edge that's cutting into there. Now, if that's sharp enough, that's too thick or whatever, we can dance with that. But the cool thing is now we turn on our um, symmetry modifiers on all the sides. I guess some of my stuff. Turn on that and I can see. Now this looks rounded and we'll talk about that with smoothing groups. But for now, um, we now have our blade built. Okay, and that's all I'm looking for. And just this blade being built and then each of them in kind. Um, and we'll go over smoothing groups on Wednesday. And that's it. Then you're gonna do that for all of the different ones. The other thing you wanna do is, I'm gonna delete this old one here real quick. I'm going to change the name of this to be Gladius. That's all we're looking for. And it can be as thin as you want. It's artistically up to you. If you want this to be thinner so the edge is not so obtuse, totally fine. Okay? And that's it.